I believe we are live and this is a little bit of a pre-show. Uh, we're going to start officially in about a minute. Uh, but in the meantime, I just like to see if the mics are okay, if everything is good. Uh, I'm just going to talk to our technical folks for just a second. Uh, is everything all right, gentlemen? Boom, two thumbs up. All right, this is going to be fantastic. And uh, please let me know when we are on the, on, on the dot. I know time is important. I'm sure we got a few more seconds. Uh, let's see. Um, and we're going to just uh, get started, including introduction to this incredible man right here. Happy to be here. Mm -hmm. And Ed, wonderful to have you as well. And I believe we are live and we are proper. Four o'clock uh, uh, on. So, Dr. Sergei Shuli Sorin at your service, uh, of course, Dad, Dr. Norm Shuli, and I have a, we have a wonderful, amazing guest who is not only someone who's saved my life, literally, my functional life, uh, but uh, someone who has made a tremendous difference in the lives of pretty much every patient that I sent over for physical, for physical and occupational therapy. The one and only Mr. Chuck Renner. <laughs> Thank you. Thank and you so now much. Officially welcome. So we are on. Uh, Chuck, uh, uh, the, uh, now I know you very well. Dr. Shilly has known you for a long time. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, And a lot of the folks know you here in Springfield. Uh, now let's talk about you. Uh, let's give a little bit of a background of a summary and, uh, you know, where you came from, what you've been doing, where you are right now, and just uh, all around. Okay. Well, I'm, I was born in Shawnee, Kansas, and I uh, went to University of Kansas and a graduated degree in occupational therapy. And um, I started out initially being a, a upper extremity therapist or certified hand therapist, and that's what I did for the first several years of my career. But then I get, uh, became interested really in chronic pain. And so I really had to kind of take a little bit of a step back to see really how to approach the body from a more holistic perspective. And I took a, a, a lot of courses and continue to take a lot of courses uh, to really uh, learn just more and more aspects of how the body actually works. Um, a lot of times our patients come in and, and you two both know that, you know, people have an idea of, of how the body works, but then there's really how the body actually works. <laughs> and, and it's almost never the same. And so it's been a, it's been a, a great journey. That journey has led me to meet both of you, which has been a, a tremendous uh, uh, plus in my life. And uh, I, I've learned so much from both of you, and I'm just happy to be here today. Yes. Uh, and uh, one thing that I'd like to mention before we get into the specific, specifics and details, because this is going to be a wonderful, wonderful, powerful show. Uh, just a little personal background. Uh, Chuck, uh, uh, Chuck Renner is an occupational therapist extraordinaire. So let me give you my introduction. Uh, as, as I know the man. I met Chuck through dad, through Dr. Shealy. And you actually work with Dr. Shilly directly as well as a patient. I did. Uh, yeah, because uh, one thing is, Dr. Sh uh, Dad, uh, do you want? Do you mind sharing a little bit of the some of what you've been going through with your leg? Uh, I'm, I'm sure people know, but uh... interestingly, an idiot at Duke University treated me with X-ray therapy for a whole week for shingles, and uh, I began to get weak in both legs, took an x-ray and my spine looked a thousand years old. I, I needed to have a laminectomy of L1 through five. I had it in night, well, when I was 80 years old and uh, I was good for 24 hours. And then I woke up with a paralyzed left foot. Mm -hmm. It's never gotten better. It has gotten worse, but I've had that. At least I walk down. I want to m mention something because I actually had a uh, Chuck. Uh, you know, you don't do this for everyone. I mean, it's kind of hard, but you actually came to the house I did. on several occasions just to honor Dr. Shealy and to take care of him. And you didn't charge us anything, by the way. So I just I want to say thank you from the bottom of my heart. Uh, uh, so this really literally came from the heart. And what I want to say is uh, with the type of injury that Dr. Shealy has, uh, without uh, adjustment, without proper support, without proper techniques and modifications, I know you gave Dr. Shealy some exercises and things to mm -hmm. maintain. And so that uh, okay. now, so, so Something like that. It doesn't always recover 100%, but uh, what's, what would be the goal of, uh, of therapy from, from your perspective? Yeah. The goal for therapy is, is always function. 
right? We want functional ability. That's that's first and foremost. If pain is in the way, we want to try and decrease pain as, as much as we possibly can. But it's really kind of simple. We're just looking at those two aspects. We want decreased pain and we want increased function. And those are our overarching goals. Wonderful. And what, you, what you've done is you've done that both for, for dad. Mm -hmm. I want to talk about my story. Okay, a little okay. bit. So this is where I wouldn't be, you know, this is where normally a patient uh, has a, well, a confidentiality and everything else. But I've been talking about my life ever since, you know, it's an open book, literally, guys, guys and girls. So uh, Chuck, uh, let's, uh, so a quick summary on my end, and then I want, I want you to jump in because this is a very interesting case scenario. So a quick executive summary in, uh, on March of uh, 2021. Excuse me, 2021. I keep, I keep saying a year ago, but it's a bit more than that now. Mm -hmm. uh, I uh, crashed the vehicle at over 100 miles an hour. And by the time I came to you, I was post limit, uh, post limit, you know, surgery fusion, literally the L1 uh, through L4. Mm -hmm. And uh, when I came to you, I had no muscle. I had no muscle activity. I was uh, stable. I could move my toes. I could do, do certain things. And I was told. I was told by, by really good people, and I get it. I understand that, you know, expectations are, you know, realistic. Uh, I might be able to walk. I might be able to learn how to walk. I might be able to do some <laughs> other basic things, but don't expect too many things. Don't expect too much out of this. In other words, it was a terrible fracture, blowout of L3. And I was literally paralyzed for a while before the surgery. So uh, that was a terrible situation. Pain was 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 has been terrible uh was terrible a spasm was terrible mm -hmm. and just more so than pain i mean pain doesn't bother me as much as some other things but uh, the fact that function i was literally not able to function the way that i've uh, i was used to and uh, do you remember the first time that i came to you i do uh, do you mind let's, let's talk about that a little bit yeah so so first um uh, uh, Dr. Shilly Soren, he, he calls me and says, hey, I think I'd like to see you. And I said, oh, okay, great. What's up? He goes, well, I've had a little accident. I said, oh, gosh, I'm sorry to hear Just that. What's, yeah. what's going on? He goes, well, I had a uh, uh, crash a car. I've had a burst fracture. I've, I've uh, had major surgery. I've had a fusion. I'm like going, <laughs> what? It's like he, he made it sound like, you know, he had like a tennis elbow or something. He was going to see me for <laughs> And so then he comes in later that day to the clinic and um, uh, he's, he's, in a, he's in a brace and uh, he's walking very, very, very slowly uh, well, with assistance. With assistance. And, um, yes. <laughs> uh, and he made it basically to some place where we could have him, have him set down pretty quick. Uh, and his function level was, was not very good at that time. Yeah. And he was in a lot of pain at that time. And so, so I was uh, shocked at first. His voice on the phone did not match what the person in front of me, <laughs> what I was seeing. And, uh, positive visualization. Positive visualization. <laughs> so we had, our, we had our work cut out for us at that yes. point. So from us, it's like, you know, what people don't understand, people that aren't in the medical field, and really some that are in the medical field, they talk about the body too much in parts. They'll talk about like sciatica, and they'll think sciatica is, is just one nerve down the leg, right? But whenever you're affecting the nervous system, you're affecting the nervous system, right? You don't, our, our body doesn't come in parts, it, it's a whole. And so if one part of the nervous system is affected, the entire nervous system is affected. Maybe not as much, but you can't just focus on that, that one little part that they're saying is having pain. You have to clear the field is what I would call it, clear the environment that, that nerve is living in. And that's what we started with you. Initially, we started trying to get the nerve roots to glide better, the major nerve trunks to glide better, to decrease the muscle tone, to decrease the guarding so those nerves could could move better. Because from my perspective, in the body, it's it's the nervous system. The nervous system rules supreme. The body will do anything it can to adjust to what the nervous system demands. And so we have to work with that system. We have to kind of encourage and nourish that system so it's not as, as guarded. We need to support it. I just want to uh, please continue because this is fascinating. Uh, I'm actually learning things now from, from your <laughs> end because I uh, you know, didn't you know, know that before. Uh, but uh, here's the thing: um, the uh, you know when we when we talk about uh, things of what to do and what not to do, I just want to bring something out. Uh, so my concept of therapy was, and I started therapy before I saw Chuck. So as soon as I got out of the, got out of the hospital, I was released, uh, and the first thing that comes to my mind: okay, now I can move my feet one after the other. Okay, great. So 
how do I get back? How do I recover? <laughs> I want to be up. I want to. I want to be up and jogging and running in, 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 in two weeks from now. Literally, that was my my goal. So what did I do? Uh, I can jump <laughs> in. Yeah. So okay. so so Dr. Soren, for for him, my my treatment plan was really easy. It was just saying no. Don't so do that. Saying, Don't do that. You can't do that. Stop doing that. He wanted. He was so motivated, uh, which is why he's like he is today. But he's so motivated that he was trying to do so much to try to get better. But he was doing what you would do like at, at, at month three or four, you know, post-surgery at like day three <laughs> <laughs> post-surgery. And so the problem is his body was guarding more. It was trying to protect himself from what he was doing from me to himself. <laughs> and, yes. <laughs> and so intrinsically, oh, I want to get stronger. I should work on strengthening. But you can't work on strengthening until the body is ready to receive that information. And I remember that. And yeah. the first thing, the first several sessions, bunch of sessions, and we, we you saw me quite frequently that time. Initially, yeah. Yeah. Uh, the, the only thing that was happening literally was, Chuck, I'd like to, I'm having trouble doing this, this and that, but uh, can you, you know, it's mm -hmm. like, stop it. Yes. <laughs> There's a lot of stop it. Lot of stop Don't it. even think about it. <laughs> okay. Uh, the modalities that you practice now there's occupational therapy there's physical therapy i had several people several several patients today in the office <laughs> and i've been sending everybody to you that needs physical help so occupational help i have no hesitation you're my my, my go-to guy i mean there's if, if i could say if there's in my mind a vision of a occupational therapist physical therapist somebody who helps here in springfield and anyway, i'm sure there's good people here but i can only think of one person off the top of my head that's you uh, you practice actually what uh, what I would say is more than physical therapy, occupational therapy. You are a little, you're what, what I would call a miracle man for me and for my patients. And there's a reason for that because you're not con con conventional and you're not uh, you're you're very unusual in very good ways. So let's talk about what you learned over the years and what you practice and how you do it. Because literally, I'm just gonna say it this way and then I'm gonna shut up. Basically, I want this to be, you know, I want to learn something. You know, uh, is that uh, uh, you know when Chuck comes in and I you know I think I know the body. I, I think I know, I, we, you know we we practice energy medicine with Dad, uh, and but he literally I call it, it's a miracle. You know, he, he he'll tap here, he'll touch there. You know, like, you know he'll he'll bend my neck. You know, it's been, it doesn't feel like he's doing anything. And all of a sudden, I go from being a Parkinson's patient, so to speak, you know, frozen, can't move, uh, you know, barely. Everything takes a tremendous effort to, ah, I'm free. No pain. Absolutely amazing. And you've, and you've worked with me with three or four, at least, unconventional techniques, mm -hmm. energetic and otherwise. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about that. So for me, gosh, maybe 20 years ago now, a long, a long time ago, maybe 25 years ago, I don't know, a long time ago, I've got more interested in, in, in basic chronic pain. And I thought that for physical therapy, for occupational therapy, I thought those are both great professions for people with acute post-operative pain problems, maybe people that are recovering from total joint replacements, um, rotator cuff surgeries. Um, I thought those two professions really had, had the answer in that realm. But I didn't really think either one of them had the answer for chronic pain. I, I didn't see it. So I started taking um, just lots of courses. You know, I, I, I thought if you had back pain, for instance, you might go to a chiropractor, you might go to an osteopath, you might go to a massage therapist, you might go to an acupuncturist, you might go to a physical therapist. And, you know, you probably would get better, but they would all do different things. Mm -hmm. So in my mind, I thought, well, they each have their own bag of tricks. Why don't I just go learn what those are? So I started going to courses by physical therapists and acupuncturists and massage therapists and osteopaths because it's the same human body. It's just different bags of tricks, right? So I wanted to try and learn what was the most efficient uh, for me at least. And with my understanding or at least my thought process of how the body works. So I started going, I spent many, many years. I still go to many courses to try to learn more how to integrate things. So some of the things that we did with you, uh, uh, a big one was uh, primal reflex release techniques. Mm -hmm. Those techniques basically Feel that when your body sustains trauma, you're you're in a position of either like fight or, or flight or withdraw, yeah. right? So so you're kind it's of contraction, contraction, Protection. or or to the third, you're in a startle response. So you're like you're just like frozen in this position, and that's that's reflexively driven, right? So if I were to try to decrease the tone in that muscle, I could massage the muscle, I could stretch the muscle, but that's working on the messenger. What's what's sending the signal is the nervous system. Right. And so if I can work with the nervous system, it just makes things uh, react much, much quicker. 
And so what we want to do is how I look at the body is kind of four or five ways. First, when like you come in, I look at structure, right? Are you in segmental alignment with your spine, with your pelvis, with your cranial bones? Are those things all in alignment? The second thing on my list is structure. And I'm sorry, is support. Support is uh, muscle and fascia. So uh, fascia, it gets um, not spoken about really nearly enough. If you were to stand up and I, I cut away your ligaments, you would still stand there. If I left your ligaments and cut away your fascia, you would fall. And so fascia creates this dynamic stability. It also helps um, maintain the muscle structure. And if the muscle can't or is too tight, the fascia is too tight, then the nerve is restricted. So we have structure first and we have support. The next one in my, my way of thinking is the nervous system has to glide. Your peripheral nerves have to glide 7 to 20% of the resting length. That's what they're supposed to do to get nutrition. If your fascia is tight, if your muscle's tight, if your SI joint's off, the nerve can't do that. And then since the nerve can't do that, the body responds by protecting. After you do the, the structure, support, and the nerve glide, the next one for me is cranial sacral. The cranial sacral system has to be activated because we breathe 20,000 times a day. And so if, if we have a, a sphenoid bone or a sacrum that's, that's stuck, we have 20,000 times where we're meeting resistance. <laughs> and so it's hard to get somebody out of that pattern if you don't correct that one basic structure. The next one for me is I call interference. So what's interference? Interference could be something visceral. Most often it's something emotional. It could be a fixed idea. It could be a secondary gain, but it's something that's stopping the body, the body's process to heal or to move forward. And then the last thing on the list for me is strengthening. A lot of times people will go into therapy and maybe they have back pain and day one, they're doing like maybe core strengthening exercises. And there's nothing wrong with core strengthening exercises, but in my mind, that doesn't make sense. You know, did, did you clear those first four areas out first? Mm -hmm. Is the body, is the soil ready to plant? You know, is it ready for the body to receive that? If it's not, I've had patients that have been other places and there's, there's many, many good therapists all over the place, but, but sometimes they'll say, oh, I've been doing core strengthening exercise for my back pain for a year. Well, if you've been core, doing core strengthening for a year and you still have back pain, that's probably not the answer. Uh, <laughs> that, that reminds me of, a, of one of our favorite mutual quotes is the definition of insanity, doing the same thing <laughs> over and over, yes. expecting a different result. Mm -hmm. Literally, if, yeah. if you, if you're, if you, this is my other favorite quote from the patients. Oh, I'm, I'm doing everything right, but I'm not getting anywhere. <laughs> uh, well, technically, if you're not getting anywhere that you want to get, then you're not doing everything right. Mm -hmm. You might be doing some things right, but. Well, uh, let me please, uh, uh, let's continue. Yeah, so so to me, it's like, that's that's how, how I look at the body. And then when you work with the physical body, with the musculoskeletal system, again, it doesn't work in parts, you know? So if, if you have a, a spasm in your right calf, right? Mm -hmm. I may be working with your thigh, with your left calf, with your right shoulder, with your left, I may be working different places because when you stand up, gravity changes everything. And it's like, then the stress of your body or the pattern that you're in uh, shows itself more. And again, all of us, all of us every day, our body adapts, it adapts to our environment. If we feel too cold, we put on a coat, right? If we're too hot, we take off a coat. If our muscle, if our uh, uh, sacroiliac joint has a problem, then how our body adapts is it tightens the gluteal muscles or it tightens the piriformis muscle, right? And so the body has adapted to that. Well, the problem is once the body adapts over a certain amount of time, it becomes normalized to the body. Mm -hmm. The patient isn't happy. The patient's not better. The person's not better. They, they feel the pain or feel the discomfort, but it seems normal to them because that's just how they are. You know, that's their new normal. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't have to be. It doesn't have to be. That's what, I, that's what yeah. literally drives me crazy is because so many people live in, in pain that just don't have to. And, um, I, I'm not necessarily against allopathic medicine. I don't want it to sound like that or these next comments, but it's finding the right tool for what you need, right? If it ain't working, if it do ain't working, do else. something different. And if yeah. I if I'm you know, I'm 62, right? So if I'm 62 and I go somewhere and they say, well, you have back pain, Chuck, but you're getting a little bit older, you know, that's normal. <laughs> it's like, 
Well, normal for who? I, I don't want that to be normal, right? Then how old are you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. And so I think a lot of people are unfortunately a little bit sold short, sold short because they may say, oh, well, you had some arthritis on an x-ray. That may have nothing to do with the pain that you have. You just may happen to have some arthritis on an x-ray. And it's like most of the time the people I see don't have to live in the pain that they're in. And that's why it's almost like a mission for me. I, I, I love to see these patients. I'd love to do what I do. I really enjoy what I do because you can make a difference. And it's this is good job security, but it's not that hard. Right? It's, it's not that hard if you learn how to work with the body instead of trying to go against what it wants to do. Now, uh, you know, I'm I'm a lifer, in other words, working with you. So, mm -hmm. you know, so basically uh, I'm going to say every week I'm going to continue to see you just because, you know, I want to continue optimizing my my, my physical cap capacity. And uh, at this point, I'm going to be testing for, uh, for, for a second uh, second phase in the brown belt. So, I mean, it's, 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 a, it's a bit of activity, quite exciting. Yeah. So, uh, but I want to keep going. I want to get Absolutely. to the black belt. I want to get to the next next steps. Uh, so that means that I have to be optimized. It's mm -hmm. not just I'm okay. I'm not, in other words, uh, I'm stable. That's not how I think. And that's not how I like to think for my patients and our people. You know, optimization, truly. Uh, Let me jump in there for just a second because that's, a, that's a very good point. You know, we don't, we don't in your practice, you mm -hmm. know, you guys don't say, okay, well, we'll try to eat a little bit better for a while <laughs> or don't try to eat better for a month. And then you don't have to eat 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 fruits and vegetables. And then there's the word try. And then, and then the word try, right? Yes. So it's like it's it's all about yeah. optimization and using the yes. tools that we can use to help optimize our total environment, right? Yes. Whether it's nutrition, whether it's energy medicine, whether it's sleep, whether it's uh, stress relaxation, they're all important, right? To basically give us the lifestyle that we want. But that's an ongoing process. We don't try to eat well for a while. We don't try to sleep well for a while. We don't try to improve our physical function for a while. It's always, it's ongoing. That's what I ask by my patients. Uh, do you want to be happy and, uh, and, and better for, uh, for a little bit and then come back again with the same problem? Or do you want to be, do you want to be better period? In other words, do you want to be healthy, happy? Do you want to be okay? Do you want to re regain, uh, and let me kind of rephrase that a little bit. Uh, you know, I have this, another favorite phrase, which is basically, God doesn't make junk. Humans do. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> but we have the chance to clean up as well. So that's 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 the positive. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, let's, uh, uh, the other thing that I'd like to, uh, to mention is, in your uh, experience in the world of physical therapy and occupational therapy, what are some of the uh, opportunities as an industry? And what are some of the downfalls so in industry there's 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 almost no better profession whether it's occupational physical therapy i mean there's a tremendous job shortage um you can go out if you have a, a degree in therapy you can go out and get a job that day because it, they're in such demand and, and it's very rewarding uh the downside of our profession is insurance is the downside um it's it's controlling too much it's limiting services just based on their algorithms that have nothing to do with patient care mm -hmm. and uh, that limiting access is is terrible it's just it's just terrible i think if if an insurance company can make a a billion dollars profit in a quarter i think they can have a little room to to add another few sessions but that i think is is to limit in fact that the therapy world is going to have to try to figure out how to deal with it at some point Dr. Shilly has a wonderful expression in a book that he has written about insurance and otherwise. And uh, it's a little bit controversial, but, um, you know, third party rape. Boom. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> well, I don't know how to say it more, more bluntly. I mean, that's, you know. It's, un it's unfortunate. And, and the problem is it, it limits care. It denies care. It limits access. And it's like the, the patient's the only one that suffers. And it's, uh, it's something that, again, as a profession, uh, we will have to try to figure out. But right now, there's not a, a good answer for it. But that's, I think, the only and really main limiting factor uh, for therapy. I think it's a great profession. I think there's lots of blue sky. And you can work in so many different fields. I just happen to work in, in kind of musculoskeletal pain management. But there's you can work in pediatrics and geriatrics, you can go sports. There's just so many things you can do if you want to. Wonderful. Now, let's take some questions as we go along, because uh, some of these are uh, right, right out on target. And by the way, if there's a question about something else that's not related to the topic, we're happy to take it. But let's do that towards the end, because I want to make sure we stay on target here for a bit. Uh, question is, can a sedentary person strengthen core at age 70? Is it too late? Classic question. <laughs> uh, never. But I'll have, I'll have Chuck answer that as well. Would you, how would you start this person out? Mm -hmm. So I, I, 
a little bit. I'm just going to take a, a, a general person who's maybe deconditioned, right? Maybe sedentary deconditioned. So really, it's 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 not as hard as as you think. You can start with isometric exercises, and isometric exercises are you you're just tightening the muscle. You're just tightening the muscle, and then you relax it. You're tightening the muscle, and then you relax it. You can do that, you can do that frequently throughout the day. So you start with isometrics. And then you move from isometrics to, to minimal movement with muscle contraction. And then you kind of go to full muscle contraction. So it's, it can just be a progression. So you can start wherever you're physically at. Um, a lot of times a misnomer is like people, have you ever known people that maybe have like a house cleaner and maybe they, they clean their house before the house cleaner comes, right? <laughs> and so it's like when people want to work out or, or get stronger, they think, well, I'm, I'm, I'm too deconditioned. I really can't do that right now. Well, what's going to change? You know, so we've got to start somewhere. So the, the the point is always we just start where you're at. You know, I mean, none of us, we all can do better. I can do better. You can do better. We all can do better uh, physically. We just have to start. So the, the yes. for me, the number one is just start. Just do it. Just yeah. do it. Be here now. And uh, so that's another wonderful thing. Now, there's another question here. That's, uh, yep. Yeah. Uh, uh, Chuck, are you still using the Ryan Welton methods? By the way, Ryan Welton is another wonderful, a wonderful physical therapy mm -hmm. uh, professional who, uh, well, who has a method for working with energy. And like you said, you know, if a person has a problem with a leg, he may touch somewhere on the arm and the leg issue goes away. Uh, now you're trained in that as well. I am. I've taken several of his courses because I think it's valuable. I think his stuff is valuable. I think he's... Uh, uh, a genius at what he's been able to discover on his own. Indeed. And uh, for me, it's it's been great. It's another modality that I integrate into into how I practice. But yes, I, I continue to use his work. Wonderful, wonderful. Let's talk about other things, including energy medicine. Now, one of the things that you use is those little uh, little life uh, what brains uh, are wonderful when they work. Uh... <laughs> They're called uh, amino neurofrequency discs. Yes. <laughs> And so amino neurofrequency discs basically have different frequencies stored in the discs. They're carbonized metal, they're about the size of a quarter, and they just stick on you. And you wear them for three days. So for three days in a row, they have a different frequency. And so on a cellular basis, you know, your, your cells kind of have two choices, right? As, as uh, Dr. Lipton has said in the past, it has uh, growth or it has protection. Mm -hmm. So if it's in a protection mode, you're not, you're not going to exercise your way out of protection mode. You have to get it so that cell doesn't feel endangered. And so what happens when you're in pain, your cellular frequency decreases. So if we're supposed to be like minus 25 millivolts and we're having more pain, our pain decreases. If you fracture your femur, your cellular energy goes from minus 25 to minus 50 millivolts. But when you're healed, it goes back to minus 25 millivolts. And these are things that can be measured and have been measured. So when people sometimes talk about frequency medicine, as you two know, they go, oh, that's kind of too far out there stuff. It's like, well, frequency medicine led to the MRI. It led to the bone stimulator. I mean, it led to things that are readily used every day, but that's, that was at one time energy <laughs> medicine. And so it's, it's, it's crazy when people term that alternative because I just think it's funny. But, but anyway, so what the discs do is they optimize the nervous system's function. So they communicate with the nervous system for that 72 hours. Mm -hmm. And then you reassess the patient, and then there's – probably 200 different discs that maybe have the frequency of antioxidants or have the frequency of things to help you relax your muscles. And so you can kind of target what the person needs uh, in, in addition to what you're doing with the patient. So it, it, uh, it boosts your efforts, I think. Yeah, and I, I do appreciate and whenever we can, whenever it's applicable, I, I do ask you to kind of, you know, apply those, when, mm -hmm. you know, when, when, mm -hmm. uh, when it, uh, it's called for. Now there's other, PEMF, pulse electromagnetic field devices that mm -hmm. you've you've utilized. Now, uh, I understand you had a personal experience with uh, with uh, with uh, Dr. Shealy's PEMF unit. Absolutely, and yeah. also, but uh, possibly professional as well. Uh, mm -hmm. What are your what what are your takes on that? We're talking about the Shealy Soren <clears throat> PEMF unit with the three different modes, uh, mm -hmm. and so let's talk about your experience. So the the uh, I use the the Shealy Soren PEMF device all the time because, again. It, it just works. You know, when you talk again about the cells and how the cells work for the body, um, if you do too much stimulation, it's just to kind of go in this duck and cover mode. So you have to talk to them in the language they want to hear or talk, and that language is frequency. And then you have to have the frequency ranges that they can hear, like you guys have developed with your PMF device. And so for me, I know uh, personally, 
I take the, if you haven't seen it before, it has like a, a halo or a circle on it. And it's like, uh, I put that device under my pillow every night and set it to Delta. And so I use it every night and I, I think it's great. I sleep wonderful. Hmm. And so I think that again, because it's just another tool that you can use to enhance your body's function. So it's like, why, why wouldn't you? I, it was an, uh, we had an interesting talk uh, with several folks, including there was one uh, an interview with Dr. Pollack uh, at one point, and he mentioned something interesting. It's really stuck in my head, and I want to just say I, I just want to say thank you to Dr. Pollack for, uh, for 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 mentioning that. Is that you know one of the towards the end of the interview he did say one very the one thing that made me just literally stop, you know, stop on a dime. Uh, that, and his words were something like that. Uh, Dr. Shealy has always been about entrainment, entrainment of the brain, entrainment of the body, entrainment of the, and there's PEMF effects and there's also entrainment effects. And the three, uh, so the three modes uh, are, uh, so, the, so the sweep mode, uh, this is basically cellular regeneration, ATP production, and just literally it's, I would use that really as a default, mm -hmm. you know, if there's ever, ever any question, you know, if you have any concern about liver, about lungs, about uh, sugar, about uh, musculoskeletal, it, personally, that device, I believe, in addition to what you were doing, was a tremendous help mm -hmm. in my, you know. I agree. Uh, the uh, second mode, which is the gamma, it's, it's, uh, that's the control center, you know, well, the brain uh, optimization. Uh, and when the brain is optimized, well, uh, the, everything else is optimized. Mm -hmm. That's uh, control the control center in Europe, you're, you're in a better place. Uh, and last but not least, the delta, as you said. But the interesting thing is emerging now, delta, this is something to consider for your personal use and uh, with, with, with clients, if you like. Um, delta can also decrease neuropathic pain, possibly. And there's a possible and zero to three cycles per second. And I've personally experienced that myself and with my patients. But I, I believe we have a research that that's that should be coming up on this. Uh, and that that is curious. Mm -hmm. That is curious. Um, I think those modalities uh, can be helpful. And, and again, I can't say this enough. It's just finding the right tool for what we need. Right. If if I have a burst fracture, I do want a surgeon. Right. I, I don't want a PMF device <laughs> if I have a burst fracture because I've, I've got to do something with that, right? Yes. So um, again, not al not anti-allopathic medicine, not anti-surgery. It's just finding the right tool for the right time. If we want to stay healthy, we have to try to optimize ourselves. And one way we can optimize ourselves is with PAMF. And a lot of times there's been really hundreds of research articles that show the benefits of that. So it's not, I don't consider this alternative or outside the box at all. It should be more standard than it is. Dr. Shuley has a wonderful slide. You know, when we, we, we've done a lot of presentations, talks, and this is one of my favorites, uh, uh, is, uh, uh, and again, not, not, not exactly sure in the exact words, but some, something about, uh, you know, a doctor is talking, it's a little cartoon. Doctor is talking to a patient, and uh, it goes something like this, Mr. Smith or something of that nature. Um, now that we've tried everything conventional, uh, and now that you have failed, uh, now maybe we can consider alternative treatments that might be 98% 98, 98 effective. Uh, something like that. Remember that one? <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, I think that oh, I think what's interesting is that um, <clears throat> we all have our own kind of uh, fixed ideas, right? About what medicine is, about what health is, about what recovery is, and so I think our our job can, in our different ways, our job is to, is to help guide the person through that that maze that they don't understand because they haven't had to go through that before. They know they have the symptoms, they know they have the problems, but they're not sure how to get from point A to point B. And when you talk about holistic medicine, when you talk about uh, kind of in, in my world, kind of more, more integrative of different modalities for therapy, you talk about those worlds, uh, the beauty of it is it's, 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 it's non-harmful, it's non-invasive, um, it, it's, it's usually results relatively quickly, you'll see progress. Um, I just don't see a, a downside to it. You know, I don't see a downside to, to enter that system. Oh, wonderful. Unless it's a fixed idea that you have. <laughs> Let's talk about people who don't succeed in physical therapy and occupational therapy. Sure. Who, 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 what's the, what's the, who are those folks? My favorite saying yeah. is by um, Henry Ford, and he said, if you think you can or you think you can't, you're right. <laughs> so sometimes if your fixed idea is so strong, if you, if you truly believe you won't get better, <laughs> I'm not stronger than your brain. You know, so if you feel and if you feel your goal in therapy is, is to prove me wrong, that I can't help you, you'll win. <laughs> and so I'm, I'm, it's unfortunate, but that sometimes does happen. 
happens so, to us all the time. And, and <laughs> Not all the time, but about fifteen percent of the time. Yeah, yeah. And, it, and it's frustrating because, and sometimes I'll tell the person, I said, you know, the, the the block that we're seeing right now is really just your mental state is what's blocking us right now. And some people hear that, some people don't. Sometimes they have to go down the road a little bit. Maybe they come back later. But it's like that's the that's the the biggest obstacle in in my mind on um, people who don't get better. Sometimes the people also. Um, uh, you, you need certain ingredients to make a cake, right? And so I can put in some ingredients, but it's not a one-way street. You have to put in some ingredients on your own. And so if you're not willing to do that, then you won't get as good a result. You have a very good result because you, once we, once we pass the stop it phase, once we pass that phase, you had a very good result because of your determination Oh, and and yeah. your ability to say, no, I expect more out of myself. I expect more out of my recovery. And that's why you have a, a, a wonderful recovery. And so expectations in healthcare has a tremendous, a tremendous effect on how our body heals. Let, let, let's talk about statistics and recovery, because there are a lot of people here uh, negative, uh, you know, negative mm -hmm. placebo, nocebo. Mm -hmm. And how powerful that is or how, how dangerous that is. Yeah, there's a, let's talk about the positive placebo and negative placebo. Dad, you've done a lot of work with that, mental, yes. emotional. What are your thoughts on that? Well, it's critical. I mean, you, you think you can't, you, you can't. Is it that simple? Yeah, so you're basically setting the limit to yourself, and that's basically that. Um, uh, and, uh, you know, it's a, we have a question. Let's actually, and we'll come back to the conversation, but this is, uh, it says, I stopped using my PEMF because I'm trying to conceive. It's been challenging, dealing with plantar fasciitis. Any thoughts on pain management, food especially for women trying to conceive or get pregnant? Okay, this brings up a very interesting point because now there's we, when we talk about PEMF, especially our PEMF unit, there is two categories, two types of folks that we are very cautious or we we, we can we can't recommend anything officially. And first is pregnancy. Why is that? Not it doesn't mean it's dangerous to to, to the pregnant woman. It doesn't mean it's bad. It's actually probably good, but. Uh, Pregnancy is a, is a high-risk state. I'm an emergency room doc. I'm a family doc as well by training. Dr. Shili is a neurosurgeon. In our field, you cannot say anything unless you're an OBGYN about a pregnancy, right? <laughs> you just can't. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's just medical legal, and I'm, I'm just being frank. You know, uh, it's not a logistical thing. It's, 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 it's a uh, medical legal thing. Now, could it help? Uh, possibly. Again, I'm not going to say anything, you know, just based on that topic. Uh, the idea is that PEMF supports the body tissue, so technically it should be good. But again, I'm not saying anything, just be based on that information. Second type of a person that we uh, just to, to be careful uh, or, or we, we were not advising PEMF is if you have an active pacemaker or something with a battery in your body, not because it's going to hurt your body, but it may, 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 may potentially interfere with the pacemaker. I haven't seen it yet. Mm -hmm. So certain people have come to me and have said, hey, uh, by the way, uh, my, my heart is doing great and I've been have had a pacemaker for a while. Wait a second, you using PMF? Yes, of course. Oh, well, uh, that's not my advice, but, you know, hey, if you're okay. But anyway, uh, the, the idea is uh, from plantar fasciitis. Uh, Chuck? Yeah, so for me, I have the same... For me, the same contraindications are true. So for me, I don't use uh, PMF on people with pacemakers. I don't use PMF with people that are pregnant. And again, the, the research is 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 not specific to say that's that's negative, but because it's inconclusive or to be honest, it really hasn't been studied that much. It should be supported, but I don't recommend it. And I don't use it. Um, my philosophy on people in chronic pain trying to get better, I think that the body is in a protective response. I think they need to try and get out of that protective response by doing something about their pain. So plantar fasciitis, typically you've got a, either a shortening or a tearing of the plantar fascia or the muscle underneath it. And so you have that muscle, it could be because of heel cord tightness. Um, it could be because the nerve doesn't glide as well through the, uh, through the leg. But all these components um, uh, collect to, to say that you're having more stress on that plantar fascia ligament. And that plantar fascia ligament doesn't have a great nutritional supply, so it doesn't have a great blood supply. And so it, it takes a long time or usually longer than other structures to heal. And so in our system, we have to make sure that we don't have anything that's contributing from the low back. We make, make sure we don't have anything contributing from the pelvis. We need to make sure that that sciatic nerve can glide that 7 to 20%. We have to, again, look at the foundation of what the body's doing 
Then we look at, are the muscles guarding? Are they not guarding? And then lastly, we get actually to the plantar fascia. So before we get to the plantar fascia, we have to make sure the environment is correct for the plantar fascia to be able to heal. And so uh, for her question, I would say yes. I would say manual therapy is, is a great way to look at this and try to get this improved uh, without the use of the PEMF unit. Wonderful, wonderful. And I do want to say uh, Ryan Welton as well has a way to deal with, with mm -hmm. plantar fasciitis. Mm -hmm. And Absolutely. he's actually come up with a brilliant uh, technique. And again, we don't have enough time to go over it mm -hmm. today, but you know, again. He uh, has a great mobilization technique that I actually uh, incorporated part of my treatment now. Mm -hmm. um, so he has a great mobilization uh, for the ankle that's easy for the patient to do. And um, that's a good part of it also. And by the way, a uh, message for Ryan, Ryan Welton. Thank you, sir. You're doing an amazing job out there. Keep inventing, keep doing great things, keep, keep uh, adding to the system. A lot of people are getting better. Mm -hmm. God bless. Okay, so if you have any other questions, we can certainly take a look or we can continue talking, of course. Uh, okay, what about vibrational plate and different kinds? Scoliosis diagnosis. Oh, that's an interesting one. Yeah, so um, I like vibrational plates myself. Um, I like using them because what they do is they, they create an environment where your muscles, your, your Golgi tendon organ, that the things that are telling your proprioceptors kind of where you are in space, they have to work harder and they, they challenge your body more. So you, if you do stretching on like a vibe plate, the stretching is more productive than if you do stretching just on, on the floor. So if you have the time and, and the resources to purchase a vibe plate, I think exercising on that creates more dynamic stability and it challenges your body even more. One thing that Dr. Uh, Norm and Dad, I should say, uh, scares me a little bit at times is that when he gets on the, on, on, he, on the vibe plate, how many, so, so let's talk about your experience with the vibe plate. Uh, in other words, you have, a, um, we, you have one at the clinic here and you have one at the house. Well, I have about 30 years, I have used vibration as a <clears throat> relaxing, as exercise specialty, I, I do at least uh, 30 minutes a day or 40 minutes a day. And um, it's, it's simpler than anything I know. Mm. It, 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 it keeps you muscles active and uh, it doesn't fatigue you. And I think we, we also had a conversation about this at some point. The other benefits is lymph support. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, yes. And also, uh, well, there's so many benefits to the body. If there's frequency support for the bone, for the, for, for, for the muscle, mm -hmm. for the connective mm -hmm. tissue. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's, just, it, it's just wonderful. Mm -hmm. oh, wonderful. Uh, and there have been actual studies that show that uh, frequent use of the vibe plate with low-level weight training uh, can help reduce the effects of osteoporosis. There's actually mm -hmm. studies that show that. Interestingly enough, uh, you know, this I started mentioning about this. So one of the things that Dad does is that he gets on a vibe plate and he does a, a bunch of exercise while standing there. Mm -hmm. And sometimes he doesn't want to hold on to the to the sides. <laughs> hold on, <laughs> um, I, I don't hold on. Oh I, I, I use well. Interestingly, music conductors live longer than other any other profession. Hmm, I didn't know that. And I presume the heart is more exercised by the arms moving than the legs moving. Mm -hmm. And so um, the entire time, except for about two minutes, I'm using my arms rhythmically. Just, um, just the therapist in me, I would like to see you use one arm rhythmically at a time <laughs> yeah. and then the other arm rhythmically at a time. Well, so, I, I've, ne I've, I've never <laughs> thank fallen. You. Well, I know, and, and with praise God, you never will. And I think if we do one arm at a time, <laughs> there's a good chance that it's going to stay that <laughs> way. That, I don't glad we're here in this program, <laughs> Chuck. I appreciate you, sir. Um, was there another part of that question? Uh, I think there was a, a, a few a few other things there. Uh, so let's, uh, uh, I think these are great questions. Let's bring them up. Uh, that's wonderful. Um, uh, let's see. Uh, using, uh, oh, yeah. We got a lot of questions. It's wonderful. Uh, using PEMF for sacroiliac cysts, which level would be best? I, I, I would say for around the pelvis area. Yes. Yeah. Uh, Chuck, would you mm -hmm. con consider that to be the right uh, location? Yes. 
Yes. Okay. Yeah. Oh, the other question, I'm sorry, I think was about scoliosis, I think. Mm -hmm. Scoliosis. Yeah. Yeah. So, and the, and the bite plate. So yes. we, again, that can be helpful. Um, there's uh, one of the clinicians at, at my office is uh, trained in what they call the Schroth method for scoliosis. And the Schroth method comes out of Germany. And it's really the only um, uh, non-invasive treatment that has uh, shown over many, many years to make significant difference with scoliosis patients. And so I think if you have a significant curve, I think that I would um, see um, our therapist that specializes in the Schroth method. Um, if you have a little bit of scoliosis, then yes, I think that uh, something like the vibe plate can be helpful in uh, exercising uh, with the vibe plate. Wonderful, wonderful. Now, uh, any particular vibe plate? Well, I'm open to various types, yeah. obviously. There's, a, I know you have your favorites. Uh, well, the confidence is so inexpensive. I paid $20,000 for my first vibe, mm, a bad. finer war art. And I, I, for the last three years, I've used the conference with great skill. I think a couple hundred bucks now, right? $250. Now, that's a big difference from 20000 I know. <laughs> a big difference. Wonderful. Uh, let's see if there's any others. Uh, I, this, these are great. Uh, can, 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 I, I believe that's for Chuck. Uh, can someone come to see you without a physician order? Um, right now, no. At, at this time, no, they, they can't. I need a physician's order to uh, see me. <clears throat> but let me let me put it this way. Mm -hmm. Everyone who comes through my way, if, if, if there's even a mention of pain or physical uh, limitation or concern, if I see them just again, uh, uh, something that a Chuck can do, I absolutely send everybody your way. I hope I'm not overwhelming you. No, no, I, I love helping people. The, mm -hmm. the, the problem we have sometimes is sometimes physicians, um, they may have had not a great experience with therapy in the past. They may have felt it's not been beneficial in the past. So some physicians routinely just don't send any of their patients to therapy. <laughs> and I've had actually a, a brilliant colleagues, uh, emergency room docs, and, you know, patient comes in with pain and, uh, I'm, uh, you know, I'm talking to, you know, well, transition point between mm -hmm. the shifts. It's ignorance, ignoring the facts. Mm -hmm. Oh, my God, crazy. Yeah. So sometimes yeah. that, that can be a limitation. So yeah. if, if your physician um, uh, for some reason doesn't want to send you, then then come and see Dr. Swan. Yeah, and uh, what we can do is uh, if that's the only question you have, then you can ask, uh, call the number at the clinic, uh, just a, you know, FYI, 417-351-5221. Uh, that's Real Holistic Doc. And if that's the only thing that you want to address primarily, and of course I'll address the entire spectrum as I can, ask for a... Uh, uh, for a uh, consultation uh, that is focused, uh, for initial mm -hmm. focused. And uh, if if it's applicable to send uh, a referral to Chuck for as many treatments as, uh, as necessary, I will have no hesitation whatsoever. He's a miracle man. And that's the other thing I should, I should clear for those of you that maybe haven't had therapy or maybe you have in the past. Therapy is not necessarily a black hole. What should happen is your initial problem should resolve in a relatively short period of time, right? You may need maintenance, you know, down the road. You may need that or, or tune-ups, so to speak, down the road. But mm -hmm. it's not something that typically, like, you're going to be in therapy for, like, months and months and months uh, doing this uh, for the initial problem. That's that if, if you are in therapy for a long time, it just means therapy is not your answer. You know, we need to send you back to you. Doing the same <laughs> thing over and over. over, and over. <laughs> so, so for me, if I do X, Y should happen. And it should happen within a relatively predictable range. Now, if, if you say you're having back pain and I, I treat you and and your job is you work a jackhammer, right? Well, you may be in therapy longer. Right? Or if you do what I do. Or or if you if you tell me the list of exercises that you're doing, which you should do four months down the road, yes, it could be a different story. Yes. <laughs> well, uh, actually, I do want to jump in before we take the next question. And, and uh, you, yes, you do take insurance right now, right? Yes. OK, yeah. very good. And we're going to talk about Chuck and the, where he is and how to find him. And But I do want to mention that uh, for anyone, and there was a couple of questions on PEMFs, uh, uh, and uh, there is indeed a, a, a sale. Uh, an Easter, uh, the code is Easter 2. 023 Easter 2023 
And today through Sunday, we're going to offer 15% off on everything uh, on that's our uh, products, which is PEMF, scalar device, which is another kind of unit. We'll, we, we'll talk about it if we can a chance, lowers the free radicals, uh, bliss oils, youth formula essentials. And, and then we'll put that up, uh, you know, for anyone who is interested. This is a wonderful opportunity and it's until Sunday. But uh, um, if I could jump in oh, just please. a second. Yeah. You know, Google for all of us is a blessing and a curse right now. Yeah. And so the product what I see with patients all the time is they'll uh, uh, get on Google and say, hey, well, I was thinking about this PMF device, but I was able to find this PMF device for $17.95, right? Um, that's not a PMF device. That is just a whistle. <laughs> it just doesn't do anything. So you, it, you don't have to buy the, the most expensive thing you, that you see, but it's like people try and say, oh, well, I can, this has PEMF. This must be the same thing. They're not all the same. You know, you have to find someone that has a medical background that's making this, just not a, 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 a supplier. And that medical background has to know the frequencies that the body responds to. And without that, you're just wasting your time and your money. It's interesting. Dr. Shirley has uh, has developed uh, this frequency-based device based on PMF. And the, the range is from uh, five uh, uh, around five to about 55 again plus minus right. uh, you know a few uh, point, point, points of points but the idea is this is the frequency of the body you don't need more you don't need less mm -hmm. in other words uh, it's wonderful um and uh, uh well uh, let's continue with questions because there's a lot of great questions so let's see how much we can cover um what kind of exercises would be specifically good for sciatica Kind of depends. So you have sciatica, you could have a bulging disc, you could have stenosis, you could have disc narrowing, you could have an SI joint problem, you could have a piriformis syndrome. So really not all sciatica is the same. So if you had a, a piriformis syndrome, you would have a, a different set of exercises than if you had somebody that had a, a, a nerve root impingement from a bulging disc. So not everyone is the same. It's not everyone is the same. You know, and, and People people think, and I, I understand this, to say, oh, well, my neighbor had sciatica, it was down his leg, I have pain down my leg, it's sciatica. But it's it's not it's not practical to say, okay, well, everyone should do this because it can come from different causes for different problems. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, let's uh, let's see, there is a um, next question, please. Uh, let's address as many of this as possible. Uh, <laughs> what's the best way for men to use the PEMF uh, to increase urine flow? I would say, uh, Dad, what you do is you have a little bit of a bladder issue with the age, yes. right? Uh, well, uh, when uh, have you noticed improvement when you keep one of the you, you use two rings, as a matter of yes. fact? Uh, so one of the ring is around the hill here, pelvis and area, right? And the other is around the neck, neck and the heart. Okay, so uh, do you find? Uh, I know you have some. You've had some bladder troubles since you're you, know, you had a few incidents, and in, you know, with the uh, last year or so. How how is the PMF doing for you for that? Uh, is it helping? Oh yes, it helps a lot. Okay, great, great. Yeah. Um, so uh, I would say keep it right to the location. The closer to the area you are, the more effective it is. Uh, now it does work at an inverse ratio of, uh, in other words, the further away you are, the less it does. But uh, if you can get closer, it's great. Now, what kind of setting? Uh, on the PEMF device for the area of the sacrum healing. I'm gonna say first and foremost, go with the scan. In other words, mm -hmm. the, 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 the first, uh, you know, the, <laughs> the, the, the cycles from, uh, from the five to 55, yeah, because want, the others are. Yeah. yeah, you want the more information the body can get the better. And so you want anything from helping to fight kind of free radicals to help give you stimulation to improve the communication of the cells to get bone healing. So you want really that sweet. And so we're talking cellular cellular level. But interestingly enough, uh, I, we're working with a number of doctors and uh, wellness specialists. Uh, and I, I've actually, uh, it, it's interesting, we should investigate this because I, I've been told by, by our uh, several other colleagues, several by the way, that there may be a relation of the gamma second uh, you know second uh, tone and gamma to us when we created that we originally intended it to be uh, just to support the brain and that's what it does optimization of the brain kind of the meditator's mind i'm okay but interestingly enough it's been reported to and we're going to check it out further is rheumatoid arthritis inflammation and things of that nature and that kind of makes sense mm -hmm. that kind of makes sense to me just from free frequency base mm -hmm. 
but I'm just going to say it's still yet to be proven by research. So I'm not going to make any more statements on that at this point. But it, in, in a very interesting observation. Uh, uh, let's see if there's any other questions. Uh, let's see. Uh, is gamma, uh, there's another one, is gamma setting good for any kind of healing besides, uh, I missed the last word there, but um, uh, besides relaxation, I believe it, but it, that remains to be seen uh, clinically. I know we've seen results uh, on patients and I have my personal experience, but uh, it, I don't want to make any statements without proper research. Yeah. Um, Let's see. Um, uh, let's talk. Let's talk about briefly uh, where you are right now, what you're doing, and how people can find you. Sure. So I'm at the Ozzy Smith Center. Um, at that facility, uh, we have a, a collective group of professionals. So we do regenerative medicine. So we'll do um, um, again uh, biologics to help the body heal. So we'll do like um, platelet-rich plasma, things like that, to help the body heal. Uh, we also do therapy actually at that facility also and so the ozzy smith center uh we're here in springfield on uh, east sunshine and uh, our number there is 417-889-4800 and to to see us uh, to see me you have to have a doctor's referral which we <laughs> spoke about that earlier and uh, um uh if you want to go on the regenerative medicine side um uh, our nurse practitioner can see you directly so that's the other option Wonderful, wonderful. Uh, I also want to say that Ozzy is a wonderful place from my perspective too. Uh, not only because I get care there myself, but I and, but I am also a medical director for the hormone program there as well. So in other words, I, I do that through my office, but I also do it through Ozzy. And the type of hormones, and I be, if you don't mind, I'll share that sure. I'm personally a client as well. Mm -hmm. And so are you with mm -hmm, hormones, uh, yeah. and it's a wonderful thing. So I mean, it, it offers a number of wonderful options and varieties. And actually, I'm going to say I'm blessed to be in this town. Initially, Dad, I'm going to tell you a little secret. When I came here uh, to, 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 to join you, my original intention, I don't think I told you this originally, was to learn and go back to a big city. I fell in love with Springfield and I'm staying, so God bless. Uh, so anyhow, it's... Uh, um i was going somewhere with that but it's you know brains are wonderful when they work uh, yeah. <laughs> they come in and out sometimes yeah so so the, so speaking of uh of, of ozzy i mean it's it's a great place to check out and if you ever have any questions just talk to us i mean uh, you know there's a lot of uh, great folks there and uh, i'll continue to work with them as much as uh, we can to benefit folks okay. um, so uh another thing is uh we do have so a few friend uh, friends and allies here in springfield and um mm -hmm. and don't forget supplements are critical to basic health. Yeah. And a bunch of them we produce and they're available at Spring Valley, the service place. I don't like to walk in and see 10,000 items and then to, I need specifically to ask a question and they serve you. And my favorite for many years is tart cherry juice concentrate, and it's available only at Coloma and uh, every day, part of my drink. Yep, you've, been, you've done it for years, actually, for decades, as a matter yes. of fact. Um, mm. Yeah, it's wonderful. But I would still say that would you, would you advise people to still eat, eat their veggies, even if they do the tart cherry juice concentrate? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so lifestyle doesn't stop. Uh, I just want to say, just because there's a nice shortcut doesn't mean forget about the big. Yeah. Uh, Chuck, uh, you've given lectures, talks, presentations. Actually, I heard you talk at uh, some of the mm -hmm. major national conferences where that, uh, that and I were also mm -hmm. presenting as well. Yes, yeah. And our uh, before the before the COVID situation, uh, when the travel, when when the wellness community was uh, connected and 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 and. and interacting mm -hmm. in person mm -hmm. you were very quite active have you have you done any, have you done any say any interesting mm -hmm. talks or presentations nationally internationally i know you do a lot of stuff and you're well you're you're an expert in your field to say the least i have um uh so, so no so the short answer is you know kind of uh, post covid things have, have have closed down they're starting to open up now more again um so i really like uh sharing this kind of message with providers and practitioners also 
because, um, you know, we can always learn, you know, all of us learn, we go to conferences all the time, we learn different things. And so different perspectives, I think, are, are just great. And so I really, really enjoy going out and talking to people. Um, I do teach kind of two systems. I teach the amino neurofrequency system. I teach a primal reflex release system um, to anyone from physicians, therapists, chiropractors, massage therapists. Um, and I, I think I taught my last course in that back in November. I'll probably teach another one in uh, June, probably. If I have a potential availability and I can break away from my insane schedule, I, I'm booked out until May already. I know. Uh, <laughs> May or May or June, I think. Uh, uh, I want to join for want, you uh, for you i have to have that like 1 a.m to 4 a.m time slot i think it's <laughs> like if i want to get you at one of these classes <laughs> yes sir yes sir but one of these days i'm i, I want to learn the magic that works on me uh, love to love to have you thank you thank you thank you anything else uh, uh in terms of the statements or questions or any anything else that we'd like to address uh and uh, we'll, we'll do our best to address as many questions as we can. Obviously, we won't be able to get to everything, but uh, we'll... I, I yeah. think if I can interrupt, sorry, I'm sorry. Please, please. But please. Um, I, I think what Dr. Sheely said um, a second ago about Spring Valley, it's just about giving your body resources, right? And so it's about giving your body resources so it, so it can perform more optimally. And so from my side of the fence, as a, as a manual therapist, it's, it's removing blocks, removing fixed patterns or patterns that aren't working as great for the person that's kind of keeping them in a healing crisis and not letting their body get out of that crisis. If you combine that with PEMF, with good nutrition, with good sleep, with stress reduction, with supplements, those are all just, just things that we can do to give our body more resources to heal. And so it's, it's, it's hitting kind of the same problem, but from many different avenues, you know, when you when you say that, and I was gonna say that I was gonna I already had this plan, but uh, you you literally beat me to it, uh, Chuck. You know the definition of holistic because you say you you said you're integ integrative and in, you know mm -hmm. integrative is not Dad's favorite word. I'm just gonna say based on the experience, mm -hmm. but holistic is Dad. Would you say that based on everything that we've been talking about and hearing that Chuck uh, Chuck Rainer qualifies as a holistic? Oh, of course. <laughs> okay, good. Made the cut. So do we have an endorsement from our end, so to speak? Yes. <laughs> Thank you so much. Okay. Uh, well, Thank actually, my, and Chuck, you got my full, absolute, 100% uh, um, gratitude. Um, I, I'll i tell you, uh, if, I, if, I, if I was compromised in terms of function, I, I, really, I, I faced that case scenario. I, I didn't know I was going to be paralyzed or not at one point. And it's terrible for somebody who's been, well, martial arts their whole life. Now, you're actually more advanced in martial arts than I am. You have several black belts, as a matter of fact. So you know how to how the body works and you know how to fix the body. So that's that, that's another a, a huge advantage. It has uh, it has been a fun road, though. So so, yeah, I've been in martial arts 42 years now. And so uh, um, and that's probably what got me to look at the body differently, to be honest with us. That's why I started this road of, on a more holistic path, because I saw what some practitioners of, of martial arts, I say, were able to do that I couldn't understand. It, it seemed so smooth, so efficient. I'm like, well, how can they affect the body that quickly? And so I said, if they can do that, I should be able to affect the body quicker on the healing side. So it's right. It's, it's kind of a deconstructive uh, thought. And then you have to kind of reconstruct what happened. And so it's been, I think, a big plus for me. And that is a part of you being a Renaissance man, if I may say so. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'd love to have you back again. Uh, I'd love to. Yep. And then, uh, of course, if the audience is interested in further questions for Chuck, uh, and uh, we'll, uh, you, know, you know, we'll get a lot of folks that we'd like to feature here, but, uh, you know, we, we, we have to have you back. Thanks so much. Thanks so much for having me. Good to see you guys again. Chuck, thank you so much. Appreciate uh, it. Unless there's any questions, uh, thank you. Uh, for being here appreciate you all blessings uh, and uh, i'm gonna i'd like to say healing to you uh much love uh, and uh, uh dad any closing thoughts stay holistic and chuck ditto <laughs> <laughs> blessings thank you have a wonderful rest